listen to this track, bitch. Hey, yeah. We back. Like that. We back. Beauty and the Beats. I go by the name Drama Boy, a.k.a. D-Boy Fresh. And you already know, Jessica Dime, a.k.a. Dime Peaks in the building. In the building. Once again. Skirt, skirt. And we got somebody special. Oh, man. Right. I, had to, I had to get here on time for this one. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to get me. I'm, I had I'm, to get together I'm, for this one. Where's everybody at? <laughs> I'm here all along. And you never are on time. Yeah, I'm always. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I said I'm not going to be late for this one. Mm-mm. The very special Wendy Day. Hey, baby. How are you? Hi, Wendy. I'm so happy to be here. No, we're happy to have you. I've been so excited. Yay. Rap <laughs> coalition. Yes. I mean, from the gate, it has been a eye-opening experience. <laughs> Knowing this woman, I mean, it's just all just like much-needed information. She's I've known you so long, too. It's been a minute. Yeah. It's How been long y'all been knowing each other? I, I would say 20 plus. 20, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I would say 20 plus. So you knew him when he was just like, scratching the surface. Just started making beats. Yes. I knew him before he was like of legal age. Yeah, I won't. I won't put it out there because I don't. You know, I don't mean to look old or anything. <laughs> but yeah, he was. He was a teenager. Wow. Yeah. So I know it's interesting to see how for you to see how he. Have it's amazing. Evolved. It's yeah. amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Drama ain't gonna stop. Drama is like a, a woo batter in your back. Churning <laughs> the, the Energizer Bunny. I will yeah, always get inspired. I was inspired by the Energizer Bunny. I, you can tell. Like that's, that's, that was inspiring, like to never give up, to never yeah. shine. Yeah, me too, though. Just always like keep it going. Mm-hmm. I was inspired by the Tasmanian Devil. Do you remember the cartoon that used to spin? Or I like could see that way Wendy. older yeah. than you. But that's what that's what inspired me. Was like the zzz. Yeah. yeah, just keep it going. Yeah, yeah. How does it feel to be like a pioneer, legendary person? I, I I don't know the answer to that because I don't I don't feel legendary. Why? Well, I've got like this list of stuff to do and Mm -hmm. and I haven't accomplished it all yet. Yeah. For 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 those who are not familiar, Wendy Day Day. was responsible for panels and Mm -hmm. workshops in Memphis. Rap for and New York. For free, yes. Mm -hmm. You know, just speaking from from my experience coming up in Memphis. I mean, this woman would do free panels and workshops teaching producers how to copyright their music, Mm -hmm. what a PRO is. Very important. Performance rights organization, you know, like what the importance of publishing, Mm -hmm. how to register your works and whatnot. And this is at the age for me, 15, 16, Mm -hmm. really starting to get serious into making my music. Like like Mm -hmm. literally I'm working with Jay Prince. The next year, I'm working with Yo Gotti mm-hmm. the next year, and all of these people. I had my business together because of a lot to do with this woman. And you right had here. to because your parents gave you an ultimatum. Can I just embarrass you a little bit? Please. Yeah, go ahead, His on. parents <laughs> gave him an ultimatum. They said, okay, you can do this little music thing mm-hmm. if you want, but you've got a year and you have to make a certain amount of money. Was it 100000 Yeah. Wow. He had to make $100,000 in a year. Can I swear? Okay. Yeah. And he fucking did it. Wow. Yes. I see. I never knew that yes. drama. Oh yeah, pop. Yes. And that was that was my college. That oh was yeah. Like, yeah. It was it was do this time. or go, go to, college. to college. Yeah. And his dad was and an educator, so he so he really wanted them to yes. kind of go to. Co- he I wanted. He wanted. I went to, to college. Yeah. This is this is my junior year actually. Oh. I was. So you know, I went. Oh. I, I was a freshman. I completed a freshman. I'm cool. Okay, I'm 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 sophomore. And I, I didn't only, know that. I went mm. to University of Memphis, okay. honestly, just to buy time. Mm, me too. You know what I mean? Because you had and, to. And, and, yeah. and by my by my too. by my yeah. junior year, I got kicked out due to unattendance. Oh yeah. So Giving it's like class. okay, I got okay. six months to 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 figure this out so i can't go to school mm-hmm. and my dad cool with the dean of the university but oh, he didn't find it. out until like three four months into the 
to the to the me being kicked out of school. Wow. So when he found out, you know, it's embarrassing for him. Mm-hmm. He, yeah. he, you know what I mean? It was like, and he he's was an educator, serious. so he was probably not only embarrassed but like hurt. Right. Like, why aren't you taking education as seriously as I yes. did? But, but he knew. Okay, I was flunking like uh, uh, physical education. Right. You know what I mean? When he know I'm a hooper, I love I love right. playing ball. You wasn't I'm, going. I'm in Atlanta. I'm t- I ain't even thinking about this, you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I already had enough You're being drummer home boy. schooling from I grew up with this man. Yeah. <laughs> so You're like, intelligent. I don't as need That's school, how it is with man, my you know? mama. Right. Cause you know, my mama teacher, so it was kinda like they pushed me t- to stay in Memphis and go to college when I really had other things on my mind that I wanted right. to do. Right. So I would go just to like fulfill, you know, what they wanted me to do, but I would also not go like you said, I wouldn't attend a lot. And it was wasting their it was wasting money. Money. You know what yeah. I mean? And so, your time. Yeah, and my time. And I just feel like I respect the fact that they said, you got this amount of time to go and make this work, yeah. or you got to like, figure oh, yeah, something else out. Pop, I you remember know, sitting, at down, least. Yeah. sitting down with Pop. It was crazy. He was like, man, you the big bad wolf. You you drummer boy, huh? So, all right, you going to show me? Because I, I pulled out like 10,000 cash. I had just got paid, you know what I'm saying, from a couple different, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. selling beats and whatnot. So, bam. He was like, man, that ain't no money. You ain't got no debit card. Mm. You ain't got no credit. You can't buy your mom in the house. You want. He just, you know what I mean. Woo, woo, woo. And I got tears coming down my eye. Like man, he got me oh. fucked up. I'm drunk, mm-hmm. boy. Boy, he, man, I'm, I'm big in these streets. And I had out. <laughs> I had. Uh, yeah, I had. That's what's up out. Okay. You know what I'm saying? With, with oh, God. It. I had uh, probably I'm a pussy. Make them get that money right. I had that out with, with Pastor Troy. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I, I had just literally done standing ovation, but it won out yet. Okay. Right? So by the time that standing ovation hit, Chris Hicks, shout out to Chris Hicks, shout out to Squeak. The people, when they when they found out uh, Warner Chapel, when they found out about me being on their Jeezy album, this was like the biggest album you could be on coming yeah. out yeah. of Atlanta. And that, that yeah. man, it was so buck 50 on the table. And once I showed my pop that bank account, we we been best friends ever since. <laughs> <laughs> I know he glad you let you go. I'm glad Wendy told us that little tea. Why you mm-hmm. sipping your tea? <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. Yeah, but but it's I'm crazy because she would you. she would do those those showcases and those those uh, uh, producer panels. panels yeah, mm-hmm. right on the campus or yeah. university in the FedEx oh, wow, amphitheater. Yeah. Mm-hmm. you know what yeah. I'm saying? So it just be like, man, bro, it just brought so much mo- many memories back. And the main thing, it. you know, about buying time is making your, that name for yourself. Yeah. So okay, I got the name in the streets, but I need I need the name in the corporate world too. Yeah. You know and what I mean? In day to day America, you know what I mean? And once I was able to do that, the sky's the limit. Yes. I wanted to ask you, Wendy, how I know you mostly focus on independent artists. Yes. So what makes you like very driven? to just help independent artists because some people just brush independent artists under the rug it's true. It's like not until you get a deal you get noticed or helped <laughs> and that's crazy to me for me it's the ownership and the control that's mm-hmm. really what i want artists to have i want them to be able to put out their own music make money with their music and then make decisions about their own life i don't want them to be you know, like a, a sharecropper to a major label where they have to pay the money back that the label's spending on them. Mm-hmm. Not that I, not that I'm anti-major label because I did the Cash Money deal, I did Eminem's deal, I did David Banner's deal, I did Twisted's deal. Wow. There's so many deals that I've done. I'm not against major labels per se. Right. I just want the artist to have control. So if they put out their music independently and then build their own fan base, Mm -hmm. if they go and do a deal with the major label then, it's leveraged. So they're gonna have a much better deal and they're gonna have more ownership Mm -hmm. because they can ask for more. Mm -hmm. But in in a perfect world, I would love it if artists stayed independent. Like I was working with little Donald, Mm -hmm. who's still independent, and he was turning down three million, four million, five million dollar deals because he knew that to keep the ownership would feed his kids in in perpetuity, yes. Mm Yes. What is the struggle that you think is is that you run into the most? You know, you've worked with and helped many different artists get to their status today. Money. Money is the hardest thing for artists to get because this is really expensive to do, as you all know. Mm -hmm. This is not a free industry, you know, and most artists don't have access to the money that it takes to win. And I'll even take it a step further and say that 
many of the artists that are the dopest and should go the furthest mm -hmm. have the least amount of money. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I feel like the guys that have all the money in the world aren't the most talented, you know? Thanks. And and I'm not sure why that is, <laughs> but it's just kind of the nature of this industry. Mm -hmm. But that's what they're lacking. And then the second thing they're lacking is know-how, which is why I give away so much free information. Mm. I'm building a website now to educate artists. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. We need they to have to like yes. Make sure you put the app with that because one thing I've noticed okay. with the new world, new kids, they're not typing HTTP or www. Mm -hmm. you, you got, where's the app? Right. Just go. You know what I mean? Right. Kids mm -hmm. are on apps. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So at least whoever you hire... To, to design or, or build thank your you website. For that. Build the app. I like your app. Thank you. <laughs> it is dope. Yeah. It I is dope, one right? Too. Oh yeah. yeah. Man, we got we're gonna announce that just <laughs> I got an app coming too. So talent, I'm excited about it. Talent versus money. Mm-hmm. Talent versus money. Talent versus money. That's what I should name the website. Talent yeah. versus money. <laughs> yeah, that's that is that is Bingo. the topic. It's, what do what what are the thoughts that come to your head when you hear Talent versus money. I was on the way here and it just kept coming to my head. Talent versus money. You know, it's and, and I love that you say that because it reminds me of Master P back in the day. Like when he first reached out to me or his team first reached out to me, they're like, okay, our music isn't great. And I'm the wackest of the entire crew, <laughs> but my shit's going to go really far because I understand marketing and I've got the budgets. And he did. And he, wow. and, and he was right. And it went really, really, really far. You know, he mm -hmm. was kind of the godfather of the three singles on an album and the rest is filler. Mm -hmm. And then putting out music every six weeks. Mm -hmm. Like he broke so many barriers, but he had the money and the image more so than he had the talent. No disrespect right. to him. Mm -hmm. But he had more money and energy than he had lyrical proficiency I think I could say without offending anybody mm -hmm. you know because you can have all the talent in the world and if you don't have the budgets to market and promote properly you really won't go past your block mm -hmm. you'll just be the dopest on your block mm -hmm. and that's not enough yeah mm -hmm. that's that's one thing like coming up in Memphis like I think is 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 automatic not necessarily automatic but it's like second nature in a sense is just the hustle it's like, okay, I'm talented in this, city. I'm talented in this, I'm talented in all of these things, but one thing I am going to be is talented with my hustle. Right. And I'm going to be talented with, you know what I mean, my mouthpiece and the way I right. market myself. Like, I, It's crazy when you from Memphis, like when we say we from Memphis, people like, damn, for real? Like, it's just all that, man. <laughs> What's all my, we'll say that to anybody. What's all my, What's what, up, what's man? Up, man? I'm from Memphis, mm -hmm. man. Yeah, this drum boy, I make beats, da, da, da. So just being able to approach and 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 take that everywhere, you know what I mean, and be able to be that salesman for myself, you know what I mean. I I, I think that helps like on top of the talent. And then once you right. can be talented with your hustle, now you you make the money, right? To do and execute. The you really needed. put in the work, though. I mean, you were everywhere. Oh yeah, everywhere. Four yeah. wheels. I'm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's bread. I mean, you knew you knew a lot of the guys we worked with in Chicago. Yep. When I met Pastor Troy, I think I met Pastor Troy when I was like 19. You know what I'm saying? And by the time I met him, he had already rapped on three of my beats. Mm. I did some, a feature with some some cats out of North Carolina. He he did a feature for them. I did some beats at some, for some guys in Tampa. He did a feature for them. Rapped on my beat. Same situation. Same thing in Chicago. I did some beats for him. He ended up rapping on the beat. It's and amazing. bam, calls me out the blue like, man, if I rap on another one of your beats, goddamn. <laughs> <laughs> and when you come back to Atlanta and then bam. You know what I'm saying? Speaking on power moves. Mm -hmm. Rap coalition. How, first, first of all, tell me how did you even end up in Memphis and where did rap coalition come from? Like where, did, where in your heart did, did, did the passion for the hip, music the music yeah the music I started listening to I'm about to date myself here <laughs> I started listening to rap in 1980 so I came up with rap when it started first rap artist you were listening to Schooly D because mm, I'm from Philly quick looking at my Gucci it's about you that time Philly. I'm from Philly wow I didn't yeah. know that 
I'm from Philly. And in 1980, it was my first year of college, and I went to a, um, a festival, a concert, and Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five were performing, and I had never seen anything like that, like the orchestrated movements and <laughs> the beat and just, you know, just them, everything about them, the passion, the energy, like, it was just like, I was like, huh? I, I was so <laughs> intrigued. And then that took me to the local record store. And I was like, okay, give me everything you have that sounds like Grandmaster Flash. Mm. And there was one DJ there who was like, hey, I have a cousin out of New York and he sends me mixtapes every week. And back then mixtapes were recorded live in the club. Okay. They weren't like what mixtapes are today. Mm. And I'm like, I will be here every Tuesday to, to get my cassette. That's how long ago it was cassettes, right? Yeah. I will be here every Tuesday and buy a cassette. And I did. And I was just like, I wasn't part of the scene, but I was, I knew what all the new music was. And it was just, it was awesome to me. Yeah. So when I got out of school, I went, I went and got a job in corporate America. I was very fortunate. I made a shit ton of money at a young age. I was that friend that kind of paid for everything okay. and took like all my girlfriends to the Caribbean for a weekend. I was that friend, okay. right? <laughs> and I wanted to do something in music. And I went to New York for a weekend with one of my friends. And I heard the Mr. Magic Marley Marl radio show. Hmm. And I said, I have to live here. So I went home and I quit my job. This is in Philly. I quit my job and I moved to New York within like three days. No money. Well, I had money, but I didn't really have anything saved up because I was just tricking it off. Right. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm going to move to New York and this is going to be my life. Mm. And I did that. I still wasn't ready to work in music because I didn't really know anybody yet. But I got a job again in corporate America and I was going to the clubs every night. So I would go to the club, I would stay out all night, I would go right to work from the club, and then I'd come home after work, sleep, get up, go to the club. So that was like my cycle, that's how important music was to me. Mm -hmm. And I still wasn't meeting anybody, I was just a fan. Wow. And then I went to Montreal and worked for a liquor company, and when I came back, it was 1992, and I'm like, okay, I think I'm ready to work in the music business now. And I started Rap Coalition. And it was, it still is today a not-for-profit. When an artist is in a bad situation with a major label or their publishing company or their management company, we step in and we help get them out of their deal by any means necessary, whatever that okay. means. Mm. And I don't think a lot of them, a lot of people know, uh, like right. the younger generation probably doesn't they don't. even know a lot about it, but they don't. it's important. It's very important. And I then know, I didn't know that. Would you say you well, were the not, first of your kind? Like the first? Oh, yeah. I think yeah. I still am. Mm -hmm. I think I'm the last of my kind. I think so, Because there's no money in it, right? Mm -hmm. Like, that's the free side of what I do. Mm -hmm. And for, for me, it's, it's important. But what's even more important is educating artists so that they don't get into a fucked up situation. Mm -hmm. Because a fucked up situation is like a divorce. Like, nobody's happy. The artist isn't happy. The label's not happy. The manager's not happy. And I'd rather avoid that. I'd rather somebody know what's fair and acceptable so they don't get into that bad situation to begin with. Mm -hmm. And then there's no deal to break. It's like, okay, just go and do you and mm -hmm. It was be all successful. right up front. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's that where the whole sense. educational thing came from. Absolutely. I started doing panels for free at ASCAP. Well, actually, I started at NYU. They gave me a room for free, and then we grew out of NYU because so many, you know, New York has so many rap, had, had so many rap, they still do. But, you know, that was like the, the ground zero of mm -hmm. rap. So I was doing events with like 300, 400 people coming. And after a while, NYU's like, look, we don't have a spot big enough for you. Mm. And ASCAP did. ASCAP had like a, it was a conference room, but it held like a shit ton of people. Mm -hmm. So they offered me the space for free. They would let me come up there early and run off on their copy machines, you know, different handouts and stuff. This is obviously pre-internet. Yeah. <laughs> and it was wonderful. And then after I did the cash money deal, I knew that I wanted to leave New York, but I wasn't ready yet. But after 9-11, the city kind of changed. Mm -hmm. And I had kind of changed. It was just a little bit more sad to be in the city. And I'm like, you know what? I've been helping so many artists from the Midwest and the South, get on, I'm gonna move somewhere in the middle of the country. Mm -hmm. 
and I was dating a guy from North Carolina at the time. We opened a map of the United States. I closed my eyes, I put my finger down, and it landed on Memphis, and that's why I moved there. I know how crazy that sounds. Oh my that's god! That's why I chose Memphis. Are you serious? You just hopping. She just down. Like, <laughs> and then okay, I was let's there. Move there. Let's move there. Exactly. I was there for six months before I told anybody that I was there, mm. and because I wanted the lay of the land. And um, the first person that knew I was there, I think it was a little, little Larry, DJ Little Larry. Wow. I think he called me and said, <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you live in Memphis? <laughs> I keep saying Larry, you. Go he gonna know what's yeah. going on. Yeah, yeah little Larry, go, hold on, hold on. You, you like, straight, uh, you, you knees. <laughs> I kind of do live in Memphis. Yeah. I ain't seen you before. (laughs) Right? Right? Oh, my gosh. Shout out to Larry. And then the first people that I really spent time were the Woods Brothers. Okay. Because back then they had a club Mm -hmm. in Memphis, like Mm -hmm. off of Winchester. Mm -hmm. And I stayed there for three years. I didn't love Memphis, but I didn't hate it either. It yeah. just, and it wasn't the people. The people, especially the people of color in Memphis, are amazing. Mm-hmm. It was kind of the white folks in Memphis. Like it is the most racially oppressive place mm-hmm. I've ever been. And I say that as a white person, right? It's just yeah, you, it's, you hear it's, it all. Yeah. 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 You hear the raw. Oh a, my <laughs> lord! I joined the music commission Mm -hmm. the memphis music commission which was really cool and we were trying to do so much stuff like we were gonna bring um g unit to memphis um we were talking to you and jazzy Fay. david banner was gonna bring his his label to memphis and y'all were gonna be you were gonna get free i don't know if you remember this you're gonna get free space in a building near the fedex center downtown Mm -hmm. and there was one guy on the commission who just killed it all he was just like, like <laughs> he was just like, no, you can't do this just for urban artists. You have to do this for everybody. And I'm like, okay, like invite everybody. They can all have space on the building. Right. Like that, that's cool. And he's like, mm, no. And then he campaigned to each person on the commission that had voting power and they vetoed it. They, they voted against wow. it. And I'm like, I'm done here. Yeah. yeah, that's, that's upsetting because I, I feel three like later yeah, I was gone. Yeah, that I feel like that would have been a big turning point in the yes. city of Memphis. Yes. It's a yes. lot of bad decisions that I feel like are made in Memphis. I actually tweeted not too long ago, somebody need to get me on the city council out there. Cause yeah, but that, that's what it takes. Like, that's what it takes. Somebody like me. Yes. You know what I'm saying? I like, wish you would. That would be awesome. I would love to. I, you I go really back home and stuff. I see... And I've li- I lived in Miami seven years. I've lived here, and I just so see, you know yeah, you've seen other I places, see other yes. cities that's you yes. know very like yes. moving very fast and have a lot going on. And I just look at Memphis. We right on the water. We got a lot of so much culture. Yes, culture. Great food. And I just great food. And some of the hottest artists coming out. Great, of amazing, amazing, now we amazing artists. <laughs> Yes, and I just don't see why we're yes. not top of the food chain when it comes to where you go, you know. Right, and that would have been right. a big turning point. I remember we brought MTV in, and we were negotiating for the MTV awards to be in Atlanta, because you know they were doing like New York and then LA, then New York, then LA, mm-hmm. and the guy who ran the the music commission in two thousand and three really got it. So we brought all the top execs from MTV and took them around to the city, took them around the city. We even took them to St. Jude's mm-hmm. so they but could see, like see. And that, that's what a lot of people don't understand, like the difference between so many people. they be like, man, why so many people move to Atlanta? Atlanta gives so much opportunity yes. to the music. Mm-hmm. Yes. And the hip hop, yes. R&B. And you can whatever. move around here. Like, first of all, there's money. So people invest in music. Mm-hmm. In Memphis, there I did I couldn't find investors. I found people with money, but they were scared. It was scared yes, money. Yes. In 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 Atlanta, it's just different because there's you 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 can see LaFace. You can or, or back then you could mm-hmm. see LaFace. You could see the labels that were based here mm-hmm. and it looked real. Yeah. Whereas in Memphis there wasn't really None. opportunity. Yeah. Nobody could see somebody and say, even Gotti, because it wasn't like a it wasn't like a company in an office, right? It was just mm-hmm. Gotti moving around right. back then. Right. So it wasn't there was no example. There was no bad boy records. There's no death row records. There's no QC. There was no think it's a game. Like, it no. just lacked that. Right. And still, I think, I mean, now we got, 
you know, like um, a couple labels coming up out of Memphis. Gotti has Chopper. his own CMG. Yeah, CMG. I mean, you know, yep. you know what I'm saying? It's, it's labels, you know, Gotti doing his thing. Dolphin got his thing, and, yep. and it's, it's, you know, Money Bag got his imprint even yep. under that with the bread gang, you know what I'm saying? And, and CLE Chopper, he's yeah, doing his thing. Yeah, NLE Chopper going crazy, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Duke Deuce doing his, doing his thing. I mean, we can name a million artists coming up out of Memphis, and uh, I, I, I think just with more dedication, and and focus yes. and and putting the time in like mm-hmm. you know yes. what I'm saying anytime we in, we in, we just left Memphis yeah. you know what I'm saying and you know anytime that a, you know it's an opportunity where what's going on here in Atlanta can be done in Memphis yes. I'm, I'm counting me in same yeah me too same because it in. needs it it needs it more That's than a 45 Atlanta. minute flight yeah. exactly you know what I'm saying? Quick, we jump hop on the jet exactly. hop on the jet and, and be right you know what I mean mm-hmm. yep but you know what I'm saying I, I would love to at least be in half of my year six months throughout different time periods, man, in Memphis and dedicating. You can do it. To you uplifting the city and yep. building, yes. you know, I more studios and facilities and like this in Memphis. Yes. Yeah, I want to help make yes. decisions because I just feel like it's a lot of older, outdated, out of touch Correct. people making decisions Correct. That's there. That's what I found. And even with you, yes. you just said a mouthful when you were there. Yes. You're like, I'm gone after that because yeah. it's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can do. I can't, I can't fight the world. Right. You know? Right. But and if I would have been on the ground, <laughs> it would have went down. <laughs> 2021, you know? So yeah. It's and we still almost 20, of... yeah, it's almost 20 years later and ancient change. So mm-hmm. it's time. It's time. Yeah. It's time. Yeah, but that, I, we say that all the time, like man, you. We've had a few black mayors, you know what I mean. But but you know, just just how Atlanta has really like fought for, you Hip-hop. know what I mean. Just you black know, black Hollywood period, black business, mm-hmm. and you know what I mean. The music and just the camaraderie of all genres, mm-hmm. understanding that unification is the biggest piece, mm-hmm. right? That's the biggest language, right? You know what I mean, so agreed. Yeah. Let's get it together, Memphis. Man. Yeah. Please get it together. I love <laughs> my city. Me, yep. I Come would on, love Memphis, to just live in Memphis. Oh, yeah. I would love to just live in Memphis. Oh, yeah. Come what? on, man. There's so yeah, much man, beautiful land and places you can live and there. And just bringing more events to the table. My yeah. boy, life is dope. DJ not, D, yes. D Nice. D he, got, nice. Hey, he got a crazy new event coming out next year called mm-hmm. Life is Dope. This is going to be a festival at Mud Island. That's dope. Oh, that's going to be awesome. Yes. So I'm super excited. The only person I've seen turn Mud Island out was Curtis, Curtis Gibbons. Curtis Gibbons. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Curtis so, Gibbons. At the know, all white. But we got to support <laughs> my boy, man, DJ D Nice. Yeah. Life I, is Dope. I I really, I, I love D-Nice. He's always been supportive of me from the beginning. Oh, yeah. Summer mm-hmm. 2022 is going to be crazy. Oh, yeah. That's dope. So what else you working on, Wendy? What, what What's what's right now? Right now Goals. is... Um, you uh, always got big priorities. I do. I, I love that you even know that about me. So <laughs> I got to say that COVID was very, very good to me. And oh, yeah. I'm sad that people died. I'm sad that people got sick. But it was really great for me. And here's why. I caught COVID. I caught COVID right at the beginning. Like, remember we shut down like in the middle of Mm -hmm. March? Mm -hmm. By the 22nd of March, I had COVID. I had a very mild case. Right. But I didn't know at the beginning that it was mild. Mm -hmm. So when I first started to get sick, everybody that I knew that had had COVID had died. Wow. So you know what I thought? I thought this is it. As much as I've done in my life and as many times as I should have died, I'm going to die from the fucking flu. Ooh, yeah. No, I can't go, I can't yeah. go out like this. <laughs> yeah. But you know, I live alone and I had a plan. I'm like, okay, if I start to get sicker, I'll take my dog to the, to the, to the kennel and then I'll drive right to the hospital. No, I'll Uber. Like I had an, I had an escape plan, like just in case. Right. Yeah. And then the most amazing thing happened after two days, I started to get better mm. and I'm like, Oh, thank you. But it changed me. Mm-hmm. And I can't really explain that to you, but it lit a fire in me. Like there was so much that I want to accomplish. And I'm like, it could be taken from me like that. Yeah. yeah. And I wasn't willing to accept that. So I went into hyperdrive. Mm-hmm. Like I started learning how to speak Spanish. I restructured my company. I started figuring out 
um, other stuff that that I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. I spoke with the the good folks at Forbes to start a hip hop business column, which they've granted to me. And fuck me for not doing it yet. Like I'm taking way too much time right. putting these articles together, right? So now they're waiting on me, right? Yes. Right? And it's Forbes. Come on, wait. Like, come on, come on. <laughs> Don't you worry. I'm gonna send you some. some I'm gonna send you some stuff through your text a little yes. later. Yeah. I need you. To, I need you to kick me in the pants because I'm yes. taking too long. Let's wait, talk wait, about wait, this. Oh, yeah, this would be yes. great. Yes. <laughs> like all these opportunities started coming and, and it just, it, it felt right. Mm -hmm. I hired a staff. Um, they're actually here in this room with me, which is amazing. What I've did never you call had an entourage. Earlier? My team. They're my yeah. team. You my said entourage. A, it was a word. I thought you had a word for them or something, a click name or something. Uh -uh. A squad, posse, crew. Oh, Team Power Moves. Team Power Moves. Because the company's called moves. Power Moves. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. I like that. Yeah, exactly. There we go. And I found that. First of all, I don't have to do this all myself. Like other people be, actually want to help mm -hmm. and be part of it. That's what that's very important. It's very people important. People yes. that a team. want to help. Keyword. Yes. yes. And know how to play and do positions. The work, and do the work and just really give a shit. Mm -hmm. And when you have, even if you have just one person, it's not like there's two of you. It's almost like with, with two people, they become three. Mm -hmm. Like you can get more done. So now I have five or six people and it's like 30. Like we really are, we're really moving. Mm -hmm. And one of my goals is to build an incubator or, or an accelerator. Mm -hmm. So I want to help artists come into the company, learn how to do this, make, start to make money, just really keep them in the nest until they're ready to fly on their own. And mm -hmm. then when they leave, they leave with 100% of their masters, 100% of their publishing, mm -hmm. And, and they're free to go. There's nothing owed. There's nothing. It's an incubator that's just going to teach them how to be great. Not as artists. They're going to have to develop themselves. As in the but business as business, part. which yes. is the part where most artists are weak. Mm -hmm. I want to help them get strong and j just keep building more and more indie labels. That's the goal. And it's called artist-centric. Artist-centric. Yep. I love that. Nah, that's genius. Yep. I love that. That's genius. I mean, because yep. you, you look at how many, like, you look at young kids especially like playing football or basketball or like they go to these different camps. And I mean, it's just a simple, this is how much it is. Mm -hmm. Why don't we have camps? And be developed. Why don't we? Why don't we? You see what I'm saying? Like you need music camps. Why don't and we have camps? And, and you're not raping or no, like I don't need no publishing. I'm not trying to sign you. No. I'm not trying to do no merchants no. or no 360s and all this craziness. Mm -hmm. These are camps that help develop your children. Exactly. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you send them to summer camps, you send them to all type of camps. I mean, if they got a passion in music, why not develop it early? Yeah, when they make it to the NBA, they make it to the NBA. And yeah, they go you know, through camps. You're not getting 15% of what they make when they get to the NBA. Right. You know, no, like, like and it all, shouldn't. They got I mean? AAU, they have all type of developmental stages that they go through exactly. before they go to the NBA. And they protect them. Like, the yes. NBA is so protective. Uh, I know. So <laughs> protective. NBA, so it's, yes. And they just like robots because they and go that's through. how it should be, though. They go through. I think he said when he got when he was a rookie and he got signed to the NBA, they had a whole class he they had do. to go through. They do. They have constant classes. Yeah. NFL, too. They have a union. They have, like, they really protect the players. Yes. And they and educate they, you about how music. to take care of your money yeah. and mm -hmm. how to invest and how mm -hmm. not to lose all your money. Mm -hmm. And, and that's we need so it. important. Yes. It's very important. Facts. So I'm doing it. Fuck it. Cause I see a lot of artists that right? do real good, and then we be like, "What happened to so and so, so and so who had that record? Yeah. Oh <laughs> man, he was signed to so and so, so and so, and it didn't work out, and yes, we don't yeah. hear no more music yes. from him. Yes, and that's just not right. Yes, that's crazy. Oh, um, advice. What what advice would you give to, you know, the the next you? Mm. You, know, you know what I mean? Somebody that's 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 trying to, you know. They, they hmm, that's a great question. Nobody's ever asked me that before. I think that, you know, there's not, there's no money in being me, right? So, or I should say there's not a lot of money in being me. It took me 10 years in the music industry to start making money where I wasn't really working for free anymore. It took me 12 to 15 years before I could support myself 
in the music industry. And I just wish somebody had told me this back then. It wouldn't have changed anything, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't have felt like I was doing something wrong. Like I was a, you know, like a big loser because I wasn't, you know, as rich as Jay-Z or Puff Daddy or whoever. Mm -hmm. I chose a different path and I chose to help people. And there's not a lot of money in helping people. Mm -hmm. There's more money in taking advantage of people. But I'm yeah. at a point in my life now where I'm in my 50s and I'm thinking about like, you know, retirement and I don't have a retirement plan. <laughs> so it's like, OK, what am I going to do now? Mm -hmm. So I'm doing things outside of music, like I'm building a co-working space with partners. You know, I'm, I'm doing a lot of stuff in real estate. I'm buying Bitcoin, you know, I'm buying mm -hmm. Tesla stock, like yeah. I'm being more educated about money than than I was coming up in the music industry. Mm -hmm. So if I was going to give advice to the next me, the advice would be to figure out a way to make money doing this on the side while you're building your company. It's great to help people, but you can't be homeless running an organization to help homeless people. Mm -hmm. right. It just doesn't make sense. Right. You know, right. That's Mon that monetizing knowledge. Though, yes. You know, mm -hmm. in, in so many forms, yes. you know, and you can do it without being, aggressive or abusive, you know, and I never realized that I thought, well, gee, if I'm, if I'm going to make money in music, I have to take advantage of somebody and you don't, you don't, you really don't. Mm -hmm. People want good services. People want to execute. Mm -hmm. And if I can execute and this is what it takes to win, just like any championship team, these are the people who I want on my team. This is, this is our vision. These are our goals. We're gonna practice our fucking asses off, right, mm -hmm. to get to this date, right, mm -hmm. or this to this. We got a championship game on this date. This is we got to get there. Yes, mm -hmm. you know what I mean. And that's the first step is just making it to your destination and, without getting and, sidetracked and hey over here and, right. and and then it's this exit you can take where you can get to get the and then you you taking all of this advice from all of these people and then get backtracked. And somebody else takes your position because they threw you off with that little. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you're taking advice from people that aren't successful. Like, what is that about? Yeah. You know, learn, learn the game. And I think that's also one of the great thing about sports is you've got to be really good at what you do to even get to the, to the, to the majors, to the yeah. major league. Right. Mm -hmm. And then once you're there, you've got to execute and be great at what you do. But the players take the time to learn the game and they practice and they do. And it do. really doesn't cost them anything. No. But what? what no. So how, Except how, time and energy. Mm -hmm. So, okay, we need a music union, a, a music association, mm -hmm. and then, okay, we need uh, a music combine. <laughs> Come by. <laughs> you and I have talked about this so much. Like, I mean, okay, we see how high yeah. you can jump. We see how long you can reach. We see how fast you can run and da 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 and all these tests. Okay, we see how fast you can pick up keys and what key that is and what music theory. And okay, we can judge you by music appreciation. Okay, we can freestyle ability, performance ability. Uh, how fast you are able to come up with a song? Let's leave them in a the room for an hour. See right. how fast you like. Mm -hmm. How do we put together the 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 music combine? The the complex that you want to build is so amazing. <laughs> and and I know this was not a setup for me to like stroke you, but I'm gonna really <laughs> ninja music, it, honey. <laughs> ninja music. <laughs> like what you have on paper is so amazing. The downside is that you're going to have to go outside of the music industry to fund it because mm -hmm. in the music industry, it's so oppressive that people want ownership. Like nobody can help you build something without taking half of your publishing or 25% of your publishing. But outside of the music industry, that doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. Like even VCs, like they're like, okay, you know what? I'll help you build this. And then I want you to sell it within, you know, five to seven years mm -hmm. and just give us 6%. Right. Mm -hmm. They don't want that, that ownership, that onerous ownership yeah. that the music business does. And I found that even in building my incubator, like I went to different people for funding and they're like, great. What percentage are you going to own? It's like none. What do you mean? None. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to own any. Right. Well, why should we give you money then? Because it's the right thing to do and you'll make fucking money. Right. Mm -hmm. You're gonna make a lot of money doing this. It's and then, not and then you your company ends up making fifty thousand on the back end on an advertisement. Because you are the company that births all of these people. So yeah. guess what? 
we want to know how the fuck are you doing this shit. And yeah. they're making money because they're taking a percentage of revenue. So as the artist is coming through the organization or the incubator, they're making a percentage, depending on what the artist is putting in financially, the, the percentage shifts, right? right. But they, they're making a percentage of revenue, which is how you do business. Mm -hmm. You don't have to own a piece of that person for the rest of their life in order to make and money. And they really right. try to. Yes, yeah. they do. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. I tipped your dealer, man. Shit. <laughs> tip the dealer. <laughs> <laughs> We gonna wrap it up. I know you gotta get out of here. I, I do. don't want to hold you. But, I can uh, stay here last all words? day. We, we definitely gotta have yes. a part two. I want to give you Absolutely. enough time to get your last words. Anything that you want to promote? Give us your website, your mm -hmm. social media. Well, you can follow me on Instagram at Rap Coalition. I'm at Rap Coalition, and I think my YouTube channel has a lot of value. There's over a hundred free mm. videos there, short mm. ones on how to succeed in music. We talk about marketing, promotion, how to choose an attorney, anything that you would need, but rather than promote me, and that's youtube.com slash this is Wendy Day, but rather than promote me and what I'm doing, I would like my last words here to be, learn the industry. Don't just jump in and, and think it's easy and start repeating what you see Drake and Kanye doing because they're already at the top of their game. Thanks. You don't you don't market and promote the way somebody who's successful mm -hmm. and already on is. This is so much harder than it looks. Yes. So please learn how it works. Study the people that are coming up and that are like at the next rung above you on the ladder. Watch them and see how they're doing it. Don't repeat what the superstars are doing because it's not going to help you. Mm -hmm. You're going to spend a lot of money. You're going to get really frustrated and you're going to feel like you're not good enough, which is the worst part because you probably are. Mm. If you do this properly, you can make a lot of money. You can have a great life. You can do for the people around you. You can accomplish all your dreams and goals, but you got to learn how to play the game and who the players are. It's yes. really that simple. If I can do it, y'all can do it. Yes, I'm not smarter than you. <laughs> Windy day. Thank you for and having like me. That. We out. We out. Thank you for coming, Windy. Thank you for having so me. Beauty and the Beats. Drama Boy. Jessica Dunn. Hey, yeah, boy. Oh my.